everyone. Happy early Easter. I hope everyone is having a chance to enjoy a bit of the sunshine. Uh, so today we're going to make some puff cross buns. First thing uh, I normally say in my bread making classes is to make sure that you get rid of all of your jewelry on your hands. So make sure that you take your rings off, your bracelets, your watches. And just roll your sleeves up a bit because we're going to be kneading this dough by hand. And hopefully you should all have everything pre-scaled. Uh, but let's just go through our ingredients. First of all, our dried fruit. So basically in here I got 170 grams of dried fruit, which I just covered with some water. And a little bit of paneer last night. Um, Make sure you drain it out. Like so. And then over here, I just have a little tray with some paper towel. And then I'm just going to crack one egg at a time. 
It's mainly because when you crack something like three eggs, I can almost guarantee there's going to be a third egg where you're going to get a piece of shell. And it's a lot easier to get a piece of shell out of one egg than three eggs. So let's just crack one egg at a time.
try and de-dough yourself a bit. Get the dough off your hands. So a couple of things here. First of all, well, you might ask me via Instagram, but normally during my classes, someone always asks me, within the first 10 minutes, how do I know when my dough is ready? When I need it enough. So basically, I'm going to show you. And you only have to have watched a few episodes of the Great British Bake Off to know this test because it's called the gluten pain test. So you grab a piece of your dough and you stretch it. And right now it just breaks straight away because we haven't kneaded the dough. So in a good 10 minutes, when your dough feels a lot smoother, you'll be able to stretch your dough without it breaking. So you're going to find that the more dough you have on your hands, it makes everything super duper sticky. So once in a while, just de-dough yourself. Get everything off. Well, another important thing here is that we're not adding any flour to the work surface, right? So it's all nice and clean. Instead, you just have this guy. And the dough spray keeps everything together. Right, so to knead your dough with my left hand, I'm going to hold back fold off my dough and my right hand pushes it out. So I scoop the dough out and I'll roll it back in. Scoop and roll. And you see here in the beginning it breaks a bit. You can change arms as well. Get a full both arm workout right here. So basically what we're doing is we need it we're developing the gluten, so the gluten creates these strands, so when your dough proofs up, it traps the carbon dioxide in there. And the reason we haven't added the butter in yet is because the fat in your butter prevents the gluten from forming. So if you get the butter in at the very beginning, you're going to have a really hard time developing the gluten. And you have to respond to it like small rocks. in the beginning is that we're going to prove this dough. So once we kneaded it together, get our butter in, we get our raisins in, we're going to leave it for about an hour and a half. In which time we go have lunch, whatever, and we'll come back and we'll go back on live on Instagram and I'm going to show you how to shape the hot crust buns. But for now, we're just kneading it. And this should feel quite, like quite a nice dough to me. You can, of course, do this in the KitchenAid, or Kenwood, or any other stand mixer. <laughs> not today. <laughs> but not today. Today we're just embracing hand eating. And also, it's, you know, it's a, bit of, it's a bit good for the mind, I think, just to relax and just knead away. Right. So my dough is starting to come together. It's more bouncy, more stretchy. So remember what I did before? Got a piece of my dough, I tease it out. And now I can stretch it. Hmm? So this means I got gluten in my dough, which is good. Most people at least. And we're gonna get some butter into this. So make sure that you took your butter out an hour ago. Otherwise it's gonna be rock hard and a bit hard to get into your dough. And then grab a lump of butter smear it on top and knead it in. And this is where it might feel like things are going wrong. But they're not. But it's almost like the dough has to break down a bit to absorb all of this butter. So you're just going to keep going. Even if it feels sticky and not quite right. I'm going to come in for a close up. So this is what I mean. This is what you're thinking. Oh, what is this mess? So keep kneading. And then scoop out. Another lump of butter. 
your dough should feel quite different now <laughs> compared to before pre-butter, post-butter and pre-butter. So it should feel quite um, a little bit shiny. Still very stretchy because you've got the gluten in there. So yeah, do a bit like this. Yeah? That was challenge number two. So the next challenge is to get our raisin mixture in. Now, to make it a little bit easier, so you don't get too much water in, just make sure that you pasteurize right this a bit. Just dry it out a bit. Like so. If you don't like raisins, leave it out. Maybe don't bake hot for some Because I feel like it kind of goes together. Right. So like the butter, you just gonna You just love some people. <laughs> Did you add all the butter in the dough? Yes, all my butter is in. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, get all those calories in. This is not a diet plan. <laughs> and no one is counting calories during lockdown, anyways. Right? So get all that nice butter in.
how to shape some hot cross buns. In the meantime, make sure that you have probably like 75 grams of flour sitting on the side because we're going to make the paste for the crust. 